could also be, I guess, controversial. It can be something that's so tucked up. This is going to be a very laid back video experience, sleep strategies, wake time with schedule, journey with sleep, so special, birth weight, encouraging, a long nap, health sleep, contact naps, co-sleeping, his swaddle, to say there's just in the night, one approach that fits all, and then he started falling asleep. It's just false. This was a key night feeding, and it doesn't last forever, and you need to do what is best for you and for your family, and that might look different, and that's okay. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome for the first time if you are new. I'm so glad you're here to join me today while we talk about baby sleep and sleep habits. If I'm being honest, this is the video that I haven't wanted to film. I've been putting it off for months. It's been on my list of videos to film, but I just haven't wanted to. I know that it could get some backlash. The main thing is I don't want it to come across like I'm sharing these tips or things that I've learned because they're the only way to do things because that's not true. There's lots of ways to approach baby sleep and there's not one right way. But if you're watching this video, it's because I have decided to go ahead and film it and I just want to share our experience, our journey with sleep. My son Danny is right here with me. He's just playing for a little bit before nap time. So you might hear some little baby noises. He is almost one year old, which is crazy. And I'm so thankful to say that he has been sleeping through the night. I'm talking about 12 hours each night, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little bit less, since he was three months old. And I don't think that's just a coincidence. I don't think it just has to do with his personality or demeanor. There are a number of things that I really think contributed to his awesome sleep abilities and that's what i want to share in this video so it does need to be said that i'm not a professional not a sleep professional i'm not a doctor i'm a mom i'm a first time mom and i'm just here to share my experience so definitely talk to your healthcare providers people in your community about these things and it also needs to be said that everybody's baby is different everyone's circumstances are different families are different oh my goodness there's so many differences and again to say there's just one approach that fits all is just false it's just not true but i hope that through this video you can hopefully get some inspiration, some ideas maybe, or at least just to get maybe thinking about sleep habits and just thinking through some of those strategies. And I really hope that through this video, we can just pretend like we're two good friends sitting face to face. This is going to be a very laid back video. Um, once Danny is sleeping, I'm gonna go make some muffins. I'm gonna take you along with me. And we're just gonna chat like two old friends. You are over at my house and we're sharing a cup of coffee together. And I hope that you are encouraged here. Above all, I want to just share encouragement with you from my heart to yours. So let's go ahead and get started and kick it back to when my baby was two weeks old. At two weeks, we got the okay from our healthcare provider that we no longer needed to do the waking feeds at night um up until that point i had been waking him up every two and a half hours to feed him and then at the two week appointment he had surpassed his birth weight thankfully and i should also add that um our baby was very healthy at birth i'm so thankful for that i don't take that for granted so he wasn't um in need of extra care and so I think that's one reason why he was so quickly able to, I guess, stop those night feedings. Okay, for these muffins, this is the batter. It is an active sourdough batter. So it's been, I guess, fermenting in the fridge overnight. I'm gonna add raspberries. These are a lemon berry muffin. It does call for blueberries and raspberries. I don't have frozen blueberries, so we're just gonna use raspberries. But at that point, he was having inconsistent stretches of sleep but they were kind of gradually getting longer. And now there are a number of things we were very consistent in with his sleep. This might be controversial, but we did actually put him in his own room quite early. He was only three weeks old. And there was a couple reasons for that, which could also be, I guess, controversial, but again, it's what worked best for our family. When I was getting up to feed Danny in the night, Silas, my husband, would wake up and we just sort of realized like he couldn't really do much in the night like i had to feed the baby and put him back down and my husband silas he was already back to work at that point he um 
is a business owner and has a very labor physically demanding job and so sleep is really important for him in order to do his work and support our family so we decided that we would put danny in his own room which is right next to ours it has a shared wall we used a baby monitor but i could honestly hear him even without the monitor that's how close he was to us so that way when he was up in the night i could just pop into his room feed him and put him back down now this was key i did not turn on any lights did not talk to him. I had read that before, like you're doing like a dream feed pretty much. Like you want them to still be half asleep. And that worked so well because then he would go back to sleep immediately once I put him down again. Now at this time for naps, we were still doing contact naps. Really the only time he was in his crib was to sleep. And that's another tip too, is we did not put him in there to play or to change him. He was only in his crib to sleep. So from the beginning, we established so that he would know that that space was for sleeping. And it's still that way now. And that was pretty much our routine for the first two months was I would pretty much do contact naps with him. It was such a special time to just sit on the couch, have him sleep with me in my arms, or we would put him in a little snuggle me. He liked that as well for napping. And then at nighttime, we would keep him up pretty much until we went to bed feed him, put him to bed. I did do the dream feeding as well. And then he was getting up like maybe three times in the night on average. So around that two month mark, I sort of realized I needed to be able to get up and do things. And so we started to put him down in his room for naps. We just had the same routine. It was so key for us to pay attention to his wake windows because we knew that at the end of those two hours or whatever time it was for his age, he was tired. And that was like the sweet spot to put him down and have him take a nap. Now, sleep props. We used a few. We used a soother. We gave him a soother when he was maybe three or four weeks old. So we waited a little bit and then gave that to him and he took it. We also swaddled with the like halo sleep swaddle. Um, but he didn't like to have his arms in. He liked to have them out. So that's what we did. But I still think that helped him to feel secure and cozy. And then we also did make sure that his room was black, was like blacked out for a bit. When we first started putting him down to nap around two months in his room, he wouldn't. And it's because it was bright. And so I ordered like a, it's almost like a vinyl blackout thing that you just sort of taped to the window and i did that and then he started falling asleep because he had his soother his sound machine his swaddle and it was dark it was like the perfect sleeping environment honestly just how i like to sleep um i like it to be dark i like there to be a little bit of background noise like a fan or something and of course i want to be warm and cozy in my bed and babies i don't think are too much different than that so that worked out really well for his napping all right i got my muffin tin we're going to put the batter in here i will link this recipe below hopefully it turns out well and oh i need to get something to grease these i usually use this avocado spray i get it from costco we did not heavily do the cry it out method nothing against that um if you do but we just didn't really need it. I think because we had some good things going for sleep already. What we did do was around three months for naps, we started to let Danny cry for about 10 minutes. We would set a timer because what was happening was he would go to sleep and then about 45 minutes later, he would wake up. And I talked to some of my mom friends and they did suggest that, you know, I just let him cry for a little bit learn how to self-soothe. And sure enough, after doing that for a couple days, like it didn't take too long, he did learn how to self-soothe and he would go back to sleep. Now this was all like a few days before he turned three months. And it was around that time also that he was still waking up twice in the night. He was waking up on a schedule around 1 a.m and then around 4 a.m. And I remember talking to a mom friend because I was like, I don't really think he's actually hungry because he wouldn't even eat that much. He'd be half asleep and then he'd go back to sleep. And sure enough, she, she suggested that that was perhaps just a habit that he had fallen into. And so once I sort of realized that 
Okay, I don't actually think he needs to eat. I started actually when I would hear him cry at 1 a.m. I would pop in and I would just give him his soother because usually it had fallen out at that point. And then he went back to sleep. And then I got up again at like 4 a.m. And same thing, he went back to sleep. And so thus pretty much ended our night wakings. Um, and then that combined with learning how to self-soothe during the nap times really was like a game changer. And he would sometimes wake up or stir in the night. He did begin sucking his thumb because if his soother fell out, he realized that, oh, I have this thumb I can use, which was funny because he only did that for a little bit and then he stopped um, and he doesn't anymore. He will just fall back asleep. Sometimes he will find his soother and pop it back in there. But another thing that's been so helpful with this whole journey is to have a consistent bedtime routine. And I read about that so much. So for us, it's nothing like super long that we do, but it's the same every night. Sometimes we bathe him, sometimes we don't, but I will sing to him, I will rock him, I will feed him, we'll put him in his sleep sack at this point and then put him in his crib with his soother. Lights are off, sound machine is on, and it just works like clockwork and we've done that from the beginning. And so once we start that little routine, like he knows and then he starts to get like a little fussy and he knows that it's time to go to bed and he wants to be in his bed because he loves it. And so that is something I would definitely recommend is just having a consistent routine and have heard that from other moms as well, that that is so helpful. But I do wanna talk again a little bit about the newborn season because there was a couple things um, that I should have mentioned earlier that we did. And one was to follow the eat, play, sleep schedule as opposed to paying attention to specific times during the day. Until he was about three months, we just did eat, sleep, play. So pretty much he would wake up in the morning, he would get a feeding, and then we would play or we would go for a little walk, have that wake time, which really wasn't much time before he was tired again and he would sleep. And then when he would wake up, he would eat and then play and it would just repeat throughout the day until he went to bed. And in my experience, I found that that helped to not have him rely on feedings to fall asleep. Again, if you want to do that, go for it. But I wanted to have a little bit more flexibility and for him to be able to fall asleep without needing that. And also I knew if I fed him while he was sleepy, he would probably fall asleep and maybe only be like half full, not get a full feeding. But if I fed him when he was awake and very alert, then he would have a full feeding and that would last a longer amount of time. That being said, I would nurse to sleep at bedtime and still do. I don't really think that he really needs it, but again, that's just our routine and what works for us. Another tip for the newborn season, which we didn't have to do much, but it's a good thing I think to keep in mind, is to wake your baby up after, like say if they're having a really long nap, like three hours, it might be a good idea to go ahead and wake them up because you don't want them to think that it's nighttime and have a really long stretch of sleep. You wanna save those long stretches for the night. So there was a couple times we woke him up if it was really long. And I do think that helped to distinguish day and night. So just something to keep in mind. And I should also add, which it's probably evident from this video, but we did not do co-sleeping. If that's something that you want to do, go for it. For me, it just, it just wasn't. Um, I felt safer with my baby in his own space. And I do think that it helped to get him used to his own space. So that's what worked for us. Um, we very much want him to be an independent sleeper. And so I think that starts pretty early. And yeah, that's, that's what's been working for us. And just an encouragement for you too, if you have a newborn or you will soon, I would just encourage you not to stress about sleep. It can be something that's so talked up. And I know even me sharing this video is sort of adding to the noise, but I do hope it's encouraging. And I want to just share that. I hope you can just enjoy those newborn days and not be worried about sleep. Just do what is best for your baby. Do what's best for you and your family and your husband and just enjoy those times. I really try to keep that in mind. I was given that advice 
and really took it to heart. And so we did contact naps. We, um, I did like feed him to sleep at night and we would hang out on the couch and he would be sleeping. And those times were so special for those first few months. Um, of contact naps and just developing that bond together and for me I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't creating habits that I would want to break later if that makes sense but for those first few months especially the newborn season I was very much of the mind to just enjoy it it doesn't last forever and to not be overwhelmed or worried about all of the sleep stuff. I would also encourage you, I hope you have a trusted community. Um, it's been so helpful for me to have just a few mom friends who I trust, just to ask questions and to get advice and ideas. And that has clearly helped me, like the whole giving him his soother at night because it was just a habit thing. That's because my cousin suggested that and I'm so thankful that she did because I don't know what I would have done without that advice. I probably would have just kept going and we might still be doing the night feedings. So having some confidence that you can ask questions to is so helpful. And just to listen to your instincts. I did read some different um, sleep strategies like taking care of babies was one that I looked at a bit. I didn't follow anything super closely. I just took bits and pieces from here and there and different videos like this even that I watched. And at the end of the day, Again, you have to do what's best for you and your family. And I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's so true. And I really hope that you can take that away from this video and be encouraged. Muffins are done and I realized we should do a little taste test. They do look a little less than appetizing. I think the berries just got a little bit too broken down, but let's try. That is pretty good. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> Not bad. You can't really taste the sourdough surprisingly, but I do wonder if the lemon zest just sort of overpowers it. That's really good. I would definitely make these again. I do wonder if they're a little bit overdone, but pretty good. And the lemon raspberry combo, I don't know if you can beat it, especially for springtime. Mm, so good. Well, friend, I truly hope that this video was helpful for you and encouraging. Again, I just want to reiterate that you know your baby best and you need to do what is best for you and for your family. And that might look different and that's okay. And as I've heard from my real life mom friends, that can look different for different babies, even in the same family. And it really has to do with, I think, listening to that voice inside you, that mother instinct, talking with other trusted moms, talking with your husband, and coming up with the things that will work best for you. So thanks so much for watching. I really hope that this video was helpful again and encouraging, and I so look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye, friend.